but I was, I've been seeing something pop up periodically. Whenever I've been looking at tools online, there's a brand of tools, which I consider just to be honest, a second rate. They're like bargain bin tools. They're not really bargain bin, but there's premier tools. Like you have Testo, you have Field Piece, you have Yellow Jacket, you got Navac. Then you have your second tier stuff. And not like the Chinese Dewey gauges that I shot with the shotgun. I'm talking about some other second tier style stuff. I want to show you guys something that I think is very interesting. And I'm sure you probably heard of these things. It is Elitech. And the reason why I'm showing you this stuff is because it just intrigues me. I just wonder how good it is. I always want to go buy some of this stuff and to see how good it is, which is something I might do. Because as you can see, I have it on the sale tab. Let's go up and uh, I'm going to look at products because they have HVAC tools. And there's all different kinds. The one that caught my eye is the Intelligent Vacuum Pump. Now check this out. We scroll down here. Let me see if I can find. Yeah, here. This is the Elitech SVP12 Intelligent HVAC 1 horsepower vacuum pump 12 CFM 2 stage with touch screen. There is a touch screen touch screen on a vacuum pump. Never would think that that would be a thing that anyone would want. What I'm thinking about touch screens are nice and it's cool. I'm just thinking about all the disgusting stuff, you know, with the vacuum pump oil and everything like that. How, how long is a touch screen going to last? I don't know, but there's all these interesting pictures. You see, this is the pump itself. I'll describe it for the people that are listening on the podcast. It looks like every other vacuum pump in the world, except for underneath the handle, there's a small touch screen. It looks to me like just like an entry level vacuum pump. The cap on the oil reservoir is a little bit different looking. I'm not sure what that's all about. It's kind of a weird orange, larger cap. I'm not positive why that is. Maybe it just needs a larger cap and then it has a connection for hose. I'm not sure. I don't see the hose threads there, but I'm not positive. The next slide says view vacuum change in real time. So I guess this is like the Elitech BlueVac app we got going on here. I'm not sure what, what it is. It looks like a vacuum graph. I'm not positive. I don't want to speculate, but there's a Wi-Fi symbol on the top of it. It says you can record it. It's on the screen. It's wild. Hey, uh, Randy Laz, we'll look at the scale in a second. If you have the scale, that's kind of cool because the scale to me looks like an old field piece model. Cause I've seen these things pop up where people's old models, other companies will adopt them and use them. And it means they're kind of good, I guess. Huh? Nathaniel Crumb says, I started my career with a $40 leak detector from Amazon and it actually worked. I found several leaks before I was actually allowed to do leak searches. Pretty interesting right there. So not, it's not necessarily a bad tool just because it's a no name brand or something. So that's why I'm so interested in kind of checking them out. Um, Nick's HVAC says that thing looks bad, but, but I do have to say my Phil Peace 10 CFM hasn't done me wrong, especially when paired with the true vac or the true, true blue evac kit. Now, nothing wrong with that. I bet that just pulls a vacuum real good. So back to the pump here, it's a system leakage level judgment. So it makes an estimation on leak rate, I guess, similar to the BlueVac app, I'm guessing. So it's pretty interesting. It says when the vacuum is stable, check the leakage possibility from zero to hundred levels. Zero represent uncertain leakage. The larger the number, the greater the possibility of the leakage. All right. So that's something. It says it does, it has intelligent control, motor and solenoid valve, a four inch touchscreen, a vacuum graph, data logging, estimate complete time and leakage level. One horsepower, 12 CFM, blah, blah, 22 ounces of vacuum pump oil. Anything else on this thing? Nothing else popping up here. There's a couple of these different tools I want to show you guys. Cause I just looked at these things. And I was like, what the world? So I don't know, man, it might be the best thing ever. What does that thing say? Measurements here says 10.5 inches across. That seems kind of big. That seems like it's almost not correct. <laughs> If you're looking at the front of a vacuum pump with an oil sight glass is at, and it's 10 inches across, that seems like that's too thick. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not thinking correctly, but that looks too thick to me. So it's 18 and a half inches long, 14 inches tall, 36 pounds. Oh, she's a beast. 36 pounds. Good grief. Whoa. That is a big boy. 
The Navac battery pump is like 15 pounds. I think the field piece is under 30 pounds. I think most of them hover 30 or right below that. That's interesting. What a hoss. Oh, and they have the, all the different stuff here. All right, we're going to look at those. That is wild because they have these digital gauges, man. They're like, <laughs> they're kind of interesting looking. I mean, to be honest with you, that's the thing about this stuff. Some of these things look pretty neat. You know, like you want to try them. It's like, well, this isn't Testo. Although the gauges, man, they look real Testo-like. They look like Testo got done with one of their designs and the patent ran out or something. Elitech's like, ah, we got it. That's ours. <laughs> uh, R134 says it's one horsepower. It probably is that wide. And I was thinking about it, you know, whenever I was talking about it, in my brain, it's like, this is 12 CFM. It might be a hoss daddy. Good grief. Uh, Nick says his weighs 20, 25 pounds. So this thing is heavy. But he didn't, whatever, I'm a big boy. I could carry it. We could carry the thing, but do we want to? I don't know. It looks kind of fun, though, doesn't it? So let's look at something else. See, that thing's $599. All right, so that's not bad for some pump like this. Imagine if one of the other companies made this pump. It'd be twice that much, probably. But it might last longer. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. Let me see if I can find some other stuff. I want to look more HVAC tools. The manifold. That's what I want to see. Okay. Now check. Let's go to the most expensive one. Here we are. The Elatech EMG-40V Intelligent HVAC Digital Manifold Gauge Four-Way Valve with Macron Gauge Transmitter. Macron. Okay. I'll look at the pictures first. Man, I'm, I'm a picture kind of guy. Let's look at the pictures. So the thing looks pretty cool. It's got two analog gauges in digital format. I mean, it's like a screen that has analog gauges and digital numbers on it. Or <laughs> digital numbers. It has saturation temperatures, has temperature on the low and high. Looks like it has buttons on it almost. I'm not quite sure. The off button on the side. And if you look up here where the, the, the temperature clamps plug into, that is a Testo plug right there. That looks like, looks like Testo plug to me. But you really get a Testo feeling. It, it says it does touchscreen detail and graphs. So it is a touchscreen. USB data export leak detection. Uh, I wonder what that's all about. Leak detection. I guess that's like a tightness test. I don't think it's like a the manifold is leaking. It's like a tightness test on a line set or something. It has an app, superheat and subcooling, blah blah blah. High temperature interface. Okay, blah blah. Skip skip. Has a bunch of different screens right there. Looks like it has a vacuum screen, different apps that it runs. All right, check this out. Is this not Testo, man? I'm looking at a black case with red little clasps. We have two clamps that look extremely Testo-like. It looks like they just took Testo clamps that were on the Overstock website, bought them all, and used them. Because the same sort of connector on the end it looks like an old S-Video cable, if you guys remember those. That's what it looks like. I'm not sure what the Testo clamps, the connector's called, but it just reminded me of an S-Video cable. And it looks like there is a vacuum sensor that comes separately, which is nice. In fact, this whole thing is very Testo 570 to me. That's what it looks like. What do you guys think? Do you think this looks like a Testo 570? Because that's exactly what it looks like to me. It looks like it's just a souped up Testo 570 with a screen on it. And yeah, look at everything. It's even the Testo like colors, man. <laughs> it looks exactly like that, man. If I if I would just glance at this and glance away, I would be like, oh, look, Testo's got some, uh, what? Yeah. All right, let's see what else. What else is on here? I guess that was it. So I wanted to show you guys that. That's $499. So this stuff is not cheap. It's not like they're giving it away. It ain't like a set of Deweys where you get like two for a dollar. Manifold is too bulky for me. Yeah, I don't know how big the thing is. Did it say how big it is? Let's see. That'd be kind of nice. That would be some good information. Hmm. I don't know if they're going to tell us that. The weight of the manifold is 3.8 pounds. The dimensions in millimeters. Well, this is America, bro. This is America. So I don't have any idea what that means right there. So 254 millimeters Oh my gosh, 25.4 centimeters. And then that that's about, I don't know, inches. I don't know. You guys get on Google or something like that. <laughs> oh yeah, Mark's, Mark was like, this isn't even probes. Why are we even talking about this? Hey, I actually agree with that. I like probes. But I thought it was interesting looking. I don't think they make probes. But now that you've said that, I'm kind of curious about it. Oh man, let's see. No, there's no probes up here. But I tell you what, they do have the new Z-Manifold. For those of you who recall that brilliant device, let me see if they have, they have digital pressure gauges. And oh look, hey man, look, is Appian missing something? 
is Appion missing some wireless gauges? Because I think I found them, bro. I think I found Appion's missing wireless gauges. <laughs> and they're only $159 now. We should have let these guys sell it to begin with. <laughs> it wouldn't have been so expensive. For those of you who remember, during the smart probe craze where everybody was releasing all these low-distance smart probes, this looks like Appion's version of them. And they were just like 25-foot connection distance like everybody was when they started. Everybody had a short connection distance. Like when this, all this stuff started, I was like, hey, man, we're going to be able to like go a thousand miles and we're going to be able to see our system from the truck across the street. You know, it's raining outside. We still let it run. We got the probes hooked up. They'll be fine. Now, it never worked out like that. I mean, the iManifold was the first one when the, the I connect that you can actually have a little bit of distance in between you and the actual system. And then Field Peace and Yellow Jack and everybody else is now on like the second stage of Bluetooth or whatever generation Bluetooth is on, the high range Bluetooth. Most people have a long distance probe set, but that's, that's, uh, that looks like the original. But I don't know what it's going to say about the distance. That would be kind of curious. Free app. Let's see. Let's see. Does it say Bluetooth? Bluetooth? Nope. Nope. I doubt it's going to say it only goes 10 foot. I don't think it's going to say that. Well, okay, no, no, wireless transmission distance is 30 meters. Let me put that back up on the screen. It says 30 meters wireless transmission distance. So that's a, that's a decent amount of distance. 30 meters. You know, that's like, I don't know, 75 to 100 feet, somewhere in there. So that's a decent amount for, uh, you know, $159 Appian probes. But uh, that's not the, really the one that I even care about. This is the one that I care about right here. The Z Manifold Ultra 2. See, I like to use stub gauges. I think stub gauges are awesome. And this would be a nice addition because I, I souped up my stub gauges and I made them into, uh, I used Robin Air digital gauges because I saw NorCal use one. I was like, I didn't even know this thing existed. Robin Air made little digital gauge heads. They made the same manifold that put the digitals on it, but then they sold the head separately. I guess the service parts probably for the manifold. I was like, I'm getting those. I'm putting the yellow jacket coupler on it, and I'm going to use them as uh, test gauges. And that's what these things are right here. I love this. This is perfect for me. I think this is great. You can just take the temperature separately. If you want to hook up the whole probe set, then hey, more power to you. More power to you. I think that'd be wonderful. And these are only 70 bucks. So they're probably going to last forever. Hey, wait, never mind. It says down here, solid construction. I was wondering about that. But it is solid construction, so that's going to be good, guys. That'll be real good. So Elitex got that. It goes all the way up. Wait a second. 500 PSI. All right, this is the low side. Let me see what the high side does. It's got to be 800, I guess, probably. Come on, man. I'm trying to go backwards here. All right, where's the high side at? All right, here's the high side. It looks 800 PSI for the high side, and you got to pay three more dollars for that. You got to pay, pay three more dollars for the high side, and you're good to go. And they have, looks like some, yeah, they have all sorts of different ones here. You can get the Bluetooth versions right here, I guess. Wait, what a, wait a second. This is a treasure trove, guys. Now I'm looking at the Elitech PGW500, PGW800 wireless digital pressure gauge HVAC87 refrigerants. So you can buy both of the heads for $129, which is less than the other one, but you don't get temperatures. All right, I'm about to, I'm about to wonder about this. It's just pressure. You got to take the temperatures differently. So the other ones have like the saturation temperatures on them. Man, I guess it's not going to be perfect. <laughs> I guess it's not going to be perfect. Yeah, I like smart probes too, Albert. I think that's the uh, that's the best. These guys don't have any smart probes, but I, they still caught my eye. But I've always, since smart probes came out, I was like, man, that's the way to go. That's what you got to do. But, uh, oh, I wanted to find the, the, uh, the scale because the scale looks exactly like the old Philippines model. So that's what kind of makes me think that they just like take some of the old models and just use them. Yeah, here it goes. Okay, check this out. This is the uh, the scale. And that, that is for daggone sure. That is a field piece, right? Is that not a field piece scale right there? It looks exactly like it to me. And uh, it goes, let's see, it goes up to 220 pounds. And I think Randy said he had the scale and he likes it. Jerry Lockhart says, my H10 broke twice and fixed it. I have a broken H10 I need to fix because I think that is... Uh, that's the bee's knees. That's the bee's knees right there. Anyway, that's the scale right there, guys. It looks, yeah, I think they just, I don't know. Ever since I saw like an ideal meter 
and you know, like Lowe's has those ideal uh, multimeters. And I saw one that looked exactly like a field piece. I mean, it was a field piece model, like the SC 76 or something. I was like, this is amazing. So if you look hard enough, you can find some of these old models because some of those old model field piece meters, those are my favorites, man. Those are just the best. If you want to watch more videos just like this one, click on this playlist. And if you want to see a new video you might not have ever seen before, check out this one right down here. And if you want to find out more about the sponsors that make this show possible, you can click on this box right here. And of course, if you aren't subscribed, please click here to do so.